What is up you guys? So in this one we'll be talking about complementary slackness and its usefulness to test for strong duality which means that you can also test for given points if they're optimal or not. So in this lecture we'll be talking about what the complementary slackness condition is and we'll be giving two examples where a genie comes and gives us a point to test if it's optimal or not. We'll be testing using the complementary slackness. We'll actually be giving two examples, one where the genie actually gave us an optimal point, whereas in the other example, the point to test is not the optimal point. We'll be showing how complementary slackness could be used as a test for given points. So without further ado, let's get hey, started. So let's talk about complementary slackness. What does that mean? So let's say we've got the following optimization problem and let's say we have strong duality. Okay. So that said, I know that my F zero of X star is equal to the dual function evaluated at the optimal Lagrangian pairs, right? Or the dual optimal point. So with that said, using the definition of the dual function, that is, it is the infimum at X of the Lagrangian function evaluated at the optimal Lagrangian points and using the definition of the Lagrangian function I can go ahead and say this just replacing the expression of the Lagrangian function that is f0 of x plus the following weighted sum on the inequality constraints and the weighted sum on the equality constraints right now since this is the infimum over this quantity it means that it is always lower bounded by the same quantity. What I'm trying to say is that the infimum of a certain function, right, is always lower bounded by that function, right? And in particular, we're going to evaluate that function at x star. So we're choosing a particular point, let it be x star. So with that said, we have the same quantity, but this time evaluated at x star, right? Now, since x star is optimal to this problem, it means it is feasible. So it satisfies the equality constraint, and sky is zero because of hi if x star is zero, right? So we're left with this guy, but fi of x star is negative. We know that this Lagrangian lambda i is always positive, right? So since fi's are negative, it means that sky is lower bounded by f zero of x star, right? So we're back at, you know, f0 of x star is less than or equal to f0 of x star, which means that all those inequalities, those two over here are actually equalities, okay? So what does that mean? Why is this important? We can actually see that the infimum of x of the Lagrangian function L is equal, not less than two, but equal to L evaluated at X star, which is this line over here. This guy is L X star, lambda star, mu star, and this guy over here is the infimum of the same function. So we get that the infimum of the Lagrangian function is actually equal to the Lagrangian function evaluated at the optimal point. And one thing to keep in mind is that the Lagrangian function can have multiple minimizers of X one of which is the optimal point x star. Another thing to bear in mind, thanks to strong duality, is that since the last two are true with equality, so it means that this guy over here is actually zero, right? So the weighted sum of inequality constraints is not only non-positive, but it is zero. This is very important. Now, since all these terms are, so if I expand this, lambda one f one of x down till lambda m f m of x is zero. Now, since all my lambdas are positive and my f are negative, that means that this quantity cannot be positive, right? So if it's zero, it means each and every term is zero. So, so lambda one f one of x is equal to all the terms, right, is zero. So what we get is that lambda k f k of x is zero for all k's going from one to m. And this is what is actually referred to as complementary slackness. It holds for any primal optimal x star and any dual point lambda star and nu star. Of course, only when we have strong duality. Okay, so when strong duality doesn't hold all this fails. 
okay? So you can express actually why complementary slackness is so beautiful is that you can express it alternatively. How? Well, since lambda k times fk is zero, it means two things. You can only have two cases. So case one is when, sorry here, I forgot the stars, right? These all are, are evaluated at the optimal pairs and primal point, right? So excuse me for missing that. Anyways, so if I look at any particular inequality constraint and I get that its corresponding Lagrangian multiplier is positive thanks to complementary slackness that is telling us that this product is zero, it could only mean that fk at x star is zero. So it's fk that is nulling this term out, okay? And case two is actually vice versa. It's the other way around. It's actually if fk at x star is the one who's negative, it means that lambda k star is the guy nulling this term out. Well, why is this important? So this means that for the kth inequality constraint, fk of x negative, this means that the kth optimal Lagrangian multiplier, lambda k, is zero unless its corresponding inequality constraint is active at the optimum point x star. If you're solving a certain optimization problem and you get that at a certain point that lambda k star is positive, right? You can directly conclude that the optimal point evaluated at the kth inequality constraint is zero. It's not negative. It's not strictly negative. No, it's zero. Now the other way around, if your Lagrangian multiplier is zero, you can directly conclude that your fk x star could be active. Now, if it is active, if it's negative, if it's absolutely, if it's strictly negative, then you can just straight ahead go and say lambda k star is zero, okay? So in short, the kth optimal Lagrangian multiplier, lambda k star is zero, unless fk of x is active at the optimal point. So a way to see this is by just negating case two, right? So A implies B is the equivalent of not B implies not A. That is, lambda k star is not zero. It directly implies that fk of x star, well, if we're talking about generic functions, this guy should be flipped, right? Um, positive, but since we know that fk of x star could not be positive, then we're left with zero. Okay, so if you are solving a certain optimization problem and you see that a certain Lagrangian multiplier is not zero, you can just go ahead and say my kth inequality constraint is actually zero. So which brings us back to case one, right? So case one is actually the negation of case two. Now this not equal sign could be just replaced with a positive because we know that lambda k star is never negative. How is this useful? Where does this come into play? What are applications of this? Well, let's consider a simple linear program, right? So we're actually maximizing the transpose x subject to inequality constraints on x and positivity constraints on x, okay? Now, in the previous lectures, we talked about the dual problem of this linear program. That is, we denote this problem as P, the primal problem. The corresponding dual would, you know, just be to minimize instead of maximize the B over here. So B transpose lambda with respect to lambda subject to a transpose lambda greater than or equal to C. Well, let's lay down an example on a linear program. Okay, so let's say that I've got the following problem where my C is 1 minus 2, 3, my A is 1, 1 minus 2, along with 2 minus 1, 3, 1, 1, 5, and my B is a 1, 4, 2. Okay, now you can go ahead and rewrite the primal as such. So just plugging in values A, B, and C, you get that you're maximizing x1 minus 2 x2 plus 3x3 subject to the first row of a along with the first entry of b there you go got two more that are there you go and don't forget the positivity constraint that says your x's x1 x2 x3 
are positive, okay? Now, suppose that someone came and told you, well, I've got this candidate and I think it's the solution. Some sort of genie came along and told you, okay, so the solution over here is one star is nine over seven, X two star is zero, and X three star is one over seven, okay? Well, the first thing you're going to do is start checking, right? Well, complementary slackness gives you a really nice way of checking. Check if the following point is actually optimal or not. Well, what you first start doing is, you know, you start plugging them in inside the constraints and check if they at least satisfy the constraints. Well, let's check. If you set all your X2s to zero and you start doing, you know, nine over seven minus two over seven, that's a seven over seven, which is a one. So it's equal to one. So no problem. Then you do your two times nine over seven minus three over seven. That's less than four. And so is the last constraint. Actually, the last constraint is nine plus five over seven. That's a 14 over seven. So it's a two. It's satisfied with equality. Now let's Let's see the second constraint. It's an 18 minus 3. That's a 15 over 7. So that's strictly less than 4. So what we start seeing here is that, okay, the first and third inequalities are actually equal to the, the right-hand sides. It's not that they're less than no they're equal if you go back to complementary slackness what it's telling us is that if you find an inequality constraint that is satisfied with strict equality it means it's corresponding lagrangian multiplier is set to zero so we see here that the second inequality constraint is actually strictly less than four which means that you know lambda two star has to be zero right so if we were to follow complementary slackness could only tell us that lambda 2 star is zero well let's expand this for a moment let's expand the dual and see what's going on um same way we did here we are actually minimizing lambda 1 for lambda 2 2 lambda 3 subject to this time a transpose lambda greater than C, okay? So a transpose is going to look something like this. Just flip the rows to the column. So the first row gives you that, you know, lambda one plus two lambda two plus lambda three is greater than or equal to one. The second one is lambda one minus lambda two plus lambda three is greater than minus two. The last one is minus two lambda one and is three lambda two plus five lambda three is greater than or equal to three right and of course don't forget that your lambdas are positive right but since you know x1 and x3 as you can see here are not zero this means that the first and third inequality constraints have no slack that means that this is actually an equality and so is the last one okay so solving the first and third where lambda two is zero because that's what complementary slackness is telling us. Then we get the following system. Lambda 1 plus lambda 3 is 1. And minus 2 lambda 1 plus 5 lambda 3 is 3. And solving this, we would get lambda 1 is 2 over 7. And lambda 2 is 5 over 7, right? So that means that this dual problem is optimal at lambda 1 star is 2 over 7. Lambda 2 star is 0 if strong duality holds. And lambda 3 star is 5 over 7. Now, we're still not sure at this point because we're testing if the genie is correct, right? So we just use complementary slackness right here to check. What we need to additionally check is, is it feasible for the dual? And that complementary slackness holds. So we saw that for this particular pair, we have that the first and third equality right now constraints because of the none zero x1 and x3 are satisfied. Now let's check the second constraint if it is true for th this combination. So let's see, two over seven plus five over seven, that would be a one. And one is actually greater than or equal to minus two. So the second con inequality constraint holds. And let's check those guys. So yes, all the lambdas are positive. So what can we say over here? We can say that since for this given point, we have the following complementary slackness, then indeed our x's and the lambdas are optimal for the primal and dual problems 
respectively. Now, another example on a non-optimal point would be, let's say I have the same exact problem over here, but this time I've got a plus over here instead of a minus, okay? So what does that mean? I have a plus over here. It means that if I copy, so all these steps over here, now this minus two is embedded in the C. So my C would have a plus two over here, right? So this minus two over here would be a plus two. So I have a plus two here, which means that for the derived Lagrangian pairs, lambda one star is two over seven, lambda two star is zero, and lambda three star is five over seven. I go ahead here, well, they satisfy the first and third equality constraints, whereas for the second one, it doesn't simply because two over seven plus five over seven is one, which is not greater than or equal to two. So the dual solution over here is actually not feasible. This could only mean that the proposed optimal solution, that is nine over seven, zero, one over seven, is not optimal. This is where complementary slackness could help us identify if a point is optimal or not. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this lecture beneficial. We talked about a really important topic that is complementary slackness, what it means in terms of strong duality. It could help us identify which inequality constraints are active or not at the optimal point, thanks to the, to the corresponding Lagrangian multipliers. And we gave an example where a genie came and gave us some point and through the complementary slackness consequence, we tested if this point is actually optimal or not. Turns out that for this problem over here, it is, but for the problem over here where we just flipped a minus to a plus, it is not, okay? So complementary slackness is one type of way to check for optimality. And in the next one, we'll be talking about even more interesting stuff, including the KKT conditions and why they're very powerful. Thanks for watching. We found this lecture beneficial please leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you have any questions whatsoever you could just leave a comment down in the comment section below i'll make sure i'll get to it as soon as possible thank you so much and i'll see you in future